Hello everyone, I'm Sam, I'm a current top 5 Earth player on Board Game Arena, and today we're going to talk about some Earth strategy for all player counts, even solo. The strategy of Earth is quite simple, and that's to plant as much as you can. That doesn't mean Earth is a simple game though. While the strategy is very straightforward, it's more of a tactical game. With nearly 300 cards in the deck, you can never rely on seeing the cards that you want, so you have to adapt to what you get. Your expectation going into a game of Earth should be that it ends in less than 9 rounds, and you probably want to be choosing the plant action for 6 or 7 of those rounds on your turn. There are 3 main reasons for why planting is good. Earth is an engine builder, and the earlier that you have cards in your tableau, the earlier you can benefit from them. Imagine I'm the first player in a 2 player game. I take the plant action, then you take the red action. I plant again, then you take the blue action. Then for the start of the third turn, I plant again. I have 6 cards in my tableau compared to your 3, so whichever action you take on your turn, I'm probably going to benefit more from it. The second reason is that you're fighting for valuable points with these racing objectives. Nearly all the common race objectives require cards to be planted in your tableau. If you're the person planting on your turn, you also have priority over these objectives. If two players finish the same race objective in the same turn, you'll get it first because you planted on your turn. And the third reason is these 7 points for finishing your tableau first. At the end of the game, you're probably going to score somewhere between 150 to 250 points, so 7 points might not seem like a big deal, but it is. You're getting 7 points for free for doing nothing, and by finishing your tableau first, you ensure that you get points from all 16 of your cards, as well as the maximum opportunity to score from the ecosystems. The key to planting as often as possible starts with your island card. You want a good island card that gives you as many cards and soil as possible. Generally, the lower amount of victory points that an island card gives, the better it's going to be. 6 cards and 6 soil is a great amount to start with. Your climate card is less important, as most of them are all reasonable choices. As our game plan is to be planting as much as possible, I tend to avoid cards that only give you benefits if you use the action. Usually what will help me decide is looking at the common objectives. In this case we want cards that have 4 or more victory points, as well as rocky habitats. This climate card fits both those categories. For your personal ecosystem card, you ideally want to pick something that will synergize with the common objectives, but that's not always possible. If it's not possible, just try to pick something that won't clash with them. Out of these, playing cards with a low soil cost is just universally good, but we could also look at the cold habitats as we're already starting with two on our island. When you're choosing which cards to keep, you want to keep cards that have a low soil cost, as this will allow you to continue planting. You'll also want to continuously look at the objectives and keep cards which fit the criteria. In this case, we want to keep bushes and herbs, we also want animal names, and we want cards that have one or less habitats. These five cards along the top row will all help in some way, while being relatively cheap. While we do also want cards that are worth more than four victory points, it's more important to keep cheaper cards. As a first action, planting these two flora would be ideal, as they're both cheap and their abilities give soil and sprouts. After you've planted and you're choosing which card to keep, I generally avoid event cards. Event cards are often a way of getting a few more points, but you want things that can go on your tableau. Ideally what you want is cards with a green ability. The green action needs to be taken a minimum of 8 times for the game to end. It's more likely it'll be taken around 10 or 11 times. That's pretty much guaranteed to be more than any other colour action. Let's talk about tableau positioning. There are many objectives that require you to pay attention to it, such as having different ability colours in rows and columns, different habitats. Make sure you respect all those first, but if there aren't any, like in this game, then you should generally try to keep the same types of flora in rows or columns. There are a lot of these terrain cards that have green and brown abilities. This brown ability wants mushrooms in the same row, it's an easy 9 points to get if you plan around it. There are also many different blue and yellow abilities which can give you sprouts and growth for having the same type of flora in rows and columns. When you're following through another player's action, always take soil or cards in the early game. You should consider soils worth more than one victory point each. Card draw is harder to evaluate, but having more options to choose from is nearly always better than a couple of growths. Something you always want to keep in mind is the amount of soil that your opponents have. In this case my opponent is the AI so it doesn't really matter, but even though I only have one soil showing, this is a perfect time to plant. You should always be looking to convert sprouts into soil. I have one soil showing, but I can convert these three sprouts into two soils, so I actually have three soil. If I play the giant bearded fig, I can also convert a growth into soil, and after I plant I will get a soil with this green action. So the main thing is that I have the two soil required to plant these two cards. But then if my opponent chooses to plant after me, I will still have two soil left to plant the rubber tree as well. Now it's very unlikely that you'll be able to plant every single turn. 
When you do need to take another action, take the one that benefits you the most, but also benefits your opponents the least. That's pretty straightforward. The red and blue action are both equally good ways of getting soil. Composting gives you 5 soil straight, but watering gives you the equivalent of 6 soil if you convert these sprouts into soil. Growing can also be another way to enable you to plant more, as you may be able to draw cheaper cards that cost less soil. Here's an important endgame tactic that you'll see mostly in two-player games. I'm the first player and my tableau has 15 out of the 16 cards in it, while my opponent only has 12 cards. What I don't want to be doing on my turn now is planting. Planting for me is only half an action, as I'll only be able to plant one card. My opponent is then going to have a turn after me, and if they plant as well, it will be a completely wasted action for me. As I only need one card to finish my tableau, I'm already guaranteed to get the 7 bonus points for finishing first. What I want to do now is take any other action except for plant. This often works out in your favour anyway, as if you've been spending the majority of your actions planting, you'll probably have more space for sprouts and growths on your cards. It can create a bit of a stalemate, with neither player wanting to plant. In case that happens, it's good to have a high point scoring card waiting for when they do eventually plant. If your opponent is closer in plants, like say they have 14, then it is a good idea to plant, because if they plant on their turn to get from 14 to 16, they will get the 7 point bonus for finishing their tableau first. So to sum up Earth's strategy, it's plant as often as you can, racing to finish the end of the game. Doing this while juggling all 7 different objectives is how you're going to win the game, but at the end of the day, a finished board is better than a perfect board. If you finish the game before your opponents are ready, even if you don't finish every objective, chances are that they won't either. And if you have 16 cards and they don't, then you've already denied them the chance to get full points from all rows and column objectives. Hopefully these tips have helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks everyone for watching, and good luck.